driven by CHRO contributes to the daily performance. An 80% report a data-driven CHRO who takes a strong stance on talent contributes to a company success. So three words that get repeated um, in my statistics is success or succeed. So when I when I heard this, the first thought I thought was pressure, right? That's a lot of pressure. Come on, hack humor is universal, no? <laughs> no? But luckily we have um, our actually all of our winners on stage today who are cool cats who fanned out their head press, no pressure, we can handle this. So luckily today we're going to go through some of these topics and share our best practices, our strategies, what's working, and um, we'll, we'll take some Q&A at the end from you guys. So I'd like to start over the panel uh, by going off to everyone introducing themselves. I butchered everyone's last names last night. I don't need to do that again. So talk about your role briefly and your favorite part of your job. We have met our Debbie Bola, the editorial director of HR Today, HR Today Global PR Magazine. I've been with the organization eight years now in January. And um, my favorite part of the job still is building the magazine from beginning to end. Charlotte, how do you start? Hi guys, good morning everyone. Um, I'm Charlotte Sewell, I'm commercial product at Boston Partners, um, architect as well. So 
We are headquartered in New York, uh, primarily in the PSSI domain. So all the things that you see from the subprime crisis to otherwise what happens in, in the market affects us deeply. The good thing is we've been in the market for the last 60 plus years and continue to grow strong. Um, essentially into investor communications and security process and solutions. So we are a technology solution company providing for all investment banks and other companies across the world. Um, uh, from an India standpoint, uh, we essentially are about 2,700 associates, what is it, 2,000 by the end of this calendar year. So yes, we're going to onboard around 300 people in the next two and a half months. Um, the other interesting thing that we also do is we would like the rest of the world and India in broadly globally to view us not just as a low cost geography so that all the transactions don't come through us, but we're also strategic in many ways. So that's in just terms of the kind of work that we do. Um, moving on to what's interesting about money, it's your strange you showed the cat because what I was planning to do is I have my favorite cartoon that I use all the time is a cat who sees itself in the shadow and says, oh God, I'm Batman. So well, that's what HR is doing in India for me. That's the most interesting part of my job because I have more than I'd say all my associates and globally and everybody is my boss and anyone working Great, thank you. So when we look at these words and what you guys just spoke of, what really sticks out to me is a lot of the achievements that you're proud of are on a strategic level. We're moving away from the tactical processes. Of course, that's always gonna be part of your organization or be part of the job because it comes with business. But why don't you offer some advice on how you, you've got there, the strategic level of HR over the tactical, anyone can jump in. So, So the definition of story is, is fact wrapped with context. And that's what makes it stick in your head. <laughs> so um, to the other point in terms of how we have done our journey uh, moving ahead, I would say that we've pretty much understood four aspects of the way an organization functions. Because irrespective of what happens outside or inside with the talent, I think it's important to hear the different voices. So we wrote out a program called Totally Aligned Organization that do, that's not necessarily just for the associates, it's for the business and the strategy folks as well. So the four voices are voice of wealth or voice of the market, where we need to get to know what's trending, what's happening. I just saw a book outside, a publication of Quantum Fed and Bitcoin and what's going to, you know, what's going to happen on blockchain and cryptocurrency on the east. Um, the next aspect that's important to keep in mind is the voice of the customer. So what exactly is your customer? Um, I'm sure many of you have heard Jamie Dimon change the way he has been positioning his organization and now it's not just about the investment banking, it's about them being a technology company helping the rest of the world. So it's important to know what your customer wants to do. The third aspect, most critical all the time for HR is what does the associate? And lastly is the voice of technology. So trying to coming up with an intersection of what helps all of them is what makes HR strategic and that's what the four
smart uh, uh, to machine learning and to, to really smart technology where they're going to learn about behaviors and to be able to make predictions about the avoidance behavior or can make predictions about more current and beyond. And why this is, of course, because we completely neglected technology because we were in a different market. Now that the last four or five years, the market has changed so tremendously and there's this whole big war for talent going on, all of a sudden we're trying to play catch up. But if you compare the technology that's behind Workday, it's not very, um, it's, it's a good tool, but it's not very exciting technology. It's nothing compared to the technology behind Spotify type of models, et cetera. Yeah. When they you know, really understand you as a machine or understand you or can do it, et cetera. So I think it, we're, we're playing catch up. However, I think even the current Workday suite is not up to date. So it's, and by the way, these are all top IT professionals who are like gold medals in their respective institutes. They've gotten out and they're both into the, they're both in the future of technology services industry, but they cannot have access to this because of the contracting stuff. But it's not just that, it happens across the industry. So um, in such a situation, when you look at technology, what would you look at technology, you know? So what we said is let's split HR in phases. Right. So what we're going to do is look at the three, uh, you know, big clients, and I'm back to my Tao organization, <laughs> who are essentially going to get influenced by this. It's going to be the coaches, it's going to be the leaders, and it's going to be the senior leaders, the CEO, and the board if they want any information on the tech at hand, using any kind of technical analytics and stuff like that. So what we assume is they would use the system only for the basics. That I need a letter for a bank application. I need my pay slip. I need a this. Blah blah blah. So that's one part of work. Second is specific to performance management and how am I tracking productivity? Because many a times when we outsource work, the biggest thing is I have somebody in India and I have somebody in the U.S. or for that matter in the U.K. Because you tend to forget that company a bit. You know that someone is sitting in the U.K. So how do you tackle the productivity? You try to quantify it, put it into an HR technology system, and you work around it. So that's predominantly how the approach would be seen. If you look at it from a leadership standpoint, the biggest challenge at the moment is talent mobility, because that's what's important at the moment. If you were to pick up a truly global organization, you need to know where your SMEs are sitting and how they can move around and interact with them. Because if there's an institute in the city, you make it very, very valuable. So the, the leaders would predominantly look at that. The CEO and the other, you know, just some stats, they want to gain influence with somebody else, how do you do it? I got it, you know, I'm like 30% the work, they didn't say it, you can share that. So that's on the HR technology, but on a side note, I think we love Workday, by the way, if you were the first ones to launch Workday in India, and we agree with it, it would predominantly help them to land their comp model for, you know, being the first ones to go live, so it's not been a very pleasant experience. <laughs> Thank you. 
challenges that I will go to focus uh, through to keep on learning, okay, and building subject matter that that are in there. In 2008, when we started off, we had about five interns. Uh, today, we have about 370 students, I guess, at the rate pace I have to learn. So, what is it that we did using technology? Uh, we used the combination of and machine learning is supposed to be used with introduction in that uh, in that thing, but we built our own team which provides for career pathway opportunities, which most of the industries now speaking of where, where we split a social or we show the social people like variety models. You know, the one with the pictures, the picture that you look in. You want to know a lot about things, and we go that show to a little activity you pay them to something which is specific to products, something which is very specific to business, which is very specific to technology, and which is very specific to products. So that's the four ladders that we went through. We had to provide for a lot of transparency in the system, which people essentially would like to be transparent. While I totally agree, the whole world is moving away from performance management, nobody really is interested to keep that. This tool that we built in-house essentially tells you where you are, just like the rate chart. I love rate. So it, it made things like that. You would <coughs> know a similar association like you anywhere in the organization or field. How do you do to get these values? And what do you need to do to get to become an expert? So that's the level of transparency that we provided. We linked up uh, along with our MLM. So a lot of stuff that happened on our MLM, the Karma Zone, the Flame Chart, the GitHub, which is really much of um, you know collaborating for the social to our team. So associates and peers are able to know how they need to move forward. So that's something that we've done a lot of work on in our base for the last few months and years. We're actually working on something 2020. That's the vision for the Pune Global Center as on as you know that. Uh, the thing is, if you ask me from an inter standpoint of technology, what has become a stand is uh, we using machine learning. We using um, not really. I'm sure most of you have heard of Project Oxygen by Google, right? <coughs> on the mission. That was being used on a Canadian Antarctic project called the Red Beach. Well, we don't know exactly what they do, but we have come up with a methodology where we track the age of the people and we get their cognitive history. It provides you with, and all of this, by the way, is homegrown. So people do it in their homes for us. That's why the data has multiple voices. So uh, they've developed this system that gives you the location to tell you who is the top performing leader. And if there's no consistency all of these are the three years, the leader is getting oxygen. It's not a very popular thing to India to do in India, but we still are. So that's the two things that I want to bring up. Anyone else want to share the screen? Well I think we um, for us and part of the reason we work with it is um, for a mission is to make the experience best to the employee and also as the HR process or the finance process, the expense process. Um, and it's same in the, in the expectation, we're just talking about the different generations. Um, and it's difficult for us to make that mindset change because we're not those boys or guys that are here and they're not from the golden age of HR. Um, but the, um, when you order an Uber, um, it's about when do you want that Uber to be at the endorsement and where do you want to go? That app is not the 
accepting the first, but can you keep going? Okay, I'll keep going then. I will, we'll end our question on the last one, which is talent. And um, if you could each just uh, suggest one strategy you do for attracting or recruiting talent into your organization that someone might take home and say, hey, that's a great idea. Yeah.
One is on balance of access. Uh, what they can do is ask um, for every file that they make, there's around 136 applications that they have to create for every single file that they make. Last year, we filed over 1,000 It's a number of examples. Um, so there's a special campaign, a lot of work that we do around Zephyrus. We coined it or launched it as a brand called I Welcome, which means inviting friends to become family. Family is big in India. Most of the decisions taken are still emotional and run by families, what the parents think, what the spouses think is so important. So um, the, third, the second important point that we have is we do celebrate family. So along uh, Mahatma Gandhi is, is a popular international figure now. So around his birthday, there's something called Joy of Giving Week that happens. We celebrate the joy of giving along with family and the community together every year. So it's a quantum of almost around 5,000 rupees, and there's how many members that get together <laughs> and celebrate and make things. So there's a lot of investment of time and money that happens. Um, the other really big picture that we have, I spoke about compass, our total parking sales. That we share upfront with people and we send them proof of work before they join so they at least know what they're getting into. Uh, the other thing that's also important is as India continues to become a crisis of uh, Indian world, not just in the broader world, but across, we have rolled out a program called Vishishta. It is a very, very specific linear um, you know, terminology. It's a Sanskrit word. It essentially is for leaders, and it's more of <coughs> pulling work versus push. So if you want to become a leader, you're going to sign up for this program, and it'll be a month. There's a lot of stuff that you're going to be doing. Some people say the shadow board, but it's split in uh, phases or approaches across a period of three months. And uh, the last one that I have on my thing is um, from the UC uh, that we do with my masters. We have uh, we are working towards child labor abolition uh, in India. We're working very closely with the government on it, and we are the first to have rolled out an urban program, a pro bono for India. It's just a circle. We have around 2,300 post graduates. We continue. One of them is actually a continuing engineer here at the moment, and one of them is a doctor. The other one is a, a civil servant, so you know that's that's kind of work that we've done. Uh, the last thing, the sixth point that I had is we've done a lot of work around innovation and collaboration, and yes, we could take a you know stretch on that one because that did take us a lot of time as well. Um, so that is uh, it is a platform given to all associates, irrespective of grades and levels and experience. If you have an idea, you're going to put it into the bank, and then the idea gets morphed with people or committees across not just one specific thing. In India, it's a global tool. And based on that, we've launched three new products in the market. And revenues, I'm not supposed to divulge, but almost a couple, couple of hundred million dollars. So that's in a nutshell, if I take up any more of your time. Thank you. Well, please join me in thanking